Welcome to Toucan Talk. I'm Rachel Collette. And I'm Tuki the Toucan. Before we start today's podcast, we'd like to give a shout out to all of our Patreon members at IUP. Remember, if you want to become a Patreon fan, sign up at patreon.com slash talk. Again, patreon.com slash talk. Well, thank you, Tuki. To get into today's educational technology topic, we're going to be focusing on social media and learning in the classroom and how they mix. So Tuki, how often do you use your phone, especially on social media? Oh, I'm sorry. What is that? I was just checking my Instagram. Have you seen this new TikTok dance? Oh, I see. You're addicted to technology and especially social media. I mean, you could say that. I love to scroll, chat, comment, and produce my own dance moves. So you could say that social media is a great part of your life. You use it about every day. Yes, I love it. It's an outlet for me. I learned so much new information. And if my teacher used it, I would totally pay more attention. Well, Tuki, that's exactly what we're focusing on today. Is social media useful in learning? Problem is, there's so many answers and opinion out there, but it really all just depends. Yeah, it depends. Is it good content? Is it another good dog video? I love dog videos. Ooh! Or a cat video. But Tuki, these aren't really learning things, these dog videos and cat videos. So how do we use them in education or how do we use social media in the classroom? Well, I guess you have to think of different types of social media. Some of my favorites are Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Those are great examples, Tuki. But we need to remember that social media includes many different types of social networking, like blogs, wikis, or bookmarking style media, like Pinterest. Oh yeah, I forget about those So Rachel, let me ask you this. Why would I use these in the classroom? Because I would just get distracted by TikTok all the time and social media isn't allowed at my school. Well, Tuki, I'm glad you asked. First, using social media in classroom allows students to communicate with others. I know, I love talking to my friends on Snapchat and leaving comments on Instagram. Yes, exactly. But it allows students to get their words out and they don't have to sit there with their hand up the whole time. Yeah, my wing gets a little tired in class. It also allows students to have time to participate and it includes everybody. Everybody gets a turn. Students feel more comfortable and they're able to express themselves. Yeah, I feel more comfortable when I wanna smack talk. People can't see me on the other end of the phone. Oh yes, that's actually one of the cons to using social media in classrooms. Students think that they can hide behind the screen and say whatever they want. But they need to remember that their comments on social media works exactly the same as if they were to say it out loud in class. Oh, so I would have the same consequences? That's right. Darn. I like the fact that I'm able to have my phone in class though. Exactly, which brings us to our second point. Students feel more creative and they can express themselves. Oh yeah, they can show off their dance moves or take a selfie. Mm, 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 mm. That's true, but more academically, they can create using different apps, express themselves through words or even pictures, sometimes short blurbs or long stories. Yeah. You should check out my blog to see nice short stories that I came up with on my own. I'll really have to check that out sometime. Have you ever worked with somebody on those stories? All the time. People find my blog and give me tips. Or I've even worked with my friend Alfredo on two alike birds. That's awesome. I'll have to check it out sometime. Which brings me to my third reason why social media is great in schools that students are able to collaborate and work with others, just like me and Alfredo. The same. Students can easily communicate with others, even if they're working at a remote location, like at home or even in the classroom. 
They can also use social media to communicate. Even teachers could communicate with the students if they aren't in class using social media. Couldn't have said it better myself, Dookie. Teachers can use Remind or emails or even Twitter to remind their students of what they need to do or how to do something. Students can collaborate and bounce ideas off of each other using social media, and they don't have the long wait time because of how social media is, because of how instant, sorry, social media is, as well as they are constantly checking it. Not only is it instant, but it's entertaining. I spend a lot of my free time watching videos. So Tuki, that is exactly the fourth reason that social media is great in school. Social media can be more entertaining and provide easier topics for students to connect to. Students feel that these sites are more compatible to what they already know and they already use them in their everyday lives. Which is awesome because I get so bored in class. So this could hold my attention for a long time. It's hold, it holds a lot of people's attention to me, which brings us to the fifth reason. It provides an opportunity for different learning types and styles. Teachers can use these platforms as a way for students to choose how they would like to express themselves, and it can entertain some of the students who wouldn't usually be engaged in class. All right, I see. This makes me want to tell my teacher to listen to this podcast so I can get her on board and use social media in my class. Well, I hope she would consider it, but I also have to point out the hard parts or the downfalls or the problems with social media in the classroom. Of course, there has to be a problem. Yes, there's always a problem. But teachers must worry about their students' identity as they provide them with outlets to use online sources such as social media. Students' personal information is private and school is a place where they should feel safe. So teachers need to work with the IT department to make sure their students' information is protected and they are using the social media in the best ways possible. Yeah, I would hate for somebody to get into my bank account just because I was on Twitter. Well, that's not exactly what I'm talking about or how it works, but you're kind of getting the gist. You don't want your personal information out there. Another problem that teachers must educate their students on is friendships and online friendships and how cyberbullying or online bullying can start. Being online makes it easy to reach others, so it's following them when they go home, but sometimes not everyone is who they say they are online. Ooh, like that catfish TV show. Just like that. But even other students in class could feel like they could act differently because they are behind the screen. We don't want students getting into unhealthy friendships or fall into any false accounts. Everyone needs real friends to be happy. Yes, and for our happiness, we must also think about our health. Students can suffer from too much screen time. Our eyesight can only take so much of the screen light. That's why I always wear my blue light glasses. Good idea, Tuki. In addition to that health issue, social media could harm students' mental health. They could start to create unrealistic ideas of what they should look like and compare themselves to others, which creates a really unhealthy mindset for self-esteem. Yeah, you never want to compare yourself to other birds out there, even if they are the blue ones and get a bunch of followers. Okay now, Tuki, let's not get mad at Twitter here. I know, I know, I just like to be the best bird, but this bird loves the idea of social media, so why not put it in the classroom? Good point, Tuki. We have have seen why we should implement social media, and we've also looked at the cons and some of the drawbacks. Let's just say social media isn't something that we should take lightly, and we need to practice and implement this carefully. I agree. I hope to see more of it used in the classroom. Me too. In fact, here are some of the examples of what teachers could do to use social media in the classroom. Twitter, like you stated, is a great way to get students to quickly respond. They could post something about a topic, whether it's in class or at home, and the students could quickly answer. Another way would be is if students were on a trip or a field trip, they could post stories to Instagram or have an Instagram tagline and other students could see them or even save the pictures. And students could also use medias to share their works like blogs or wikis. 
They have many different outlets to share their works and others can comment, give them suggestions and keep a conversation going between them. So what happens if my teacher is not ready to use this social media stuff? Well, Tuki, I hope they could take into consideration, but if they aren't ready, they could start by making themselves think they are ready. They could start by making prompts or projects that can be done on a fake account or even on paper with the same outlines as social media. This way they're able to preview what it would look like on an actual social media platform and then plan for the bumps and the problems along the road. And once they have prepared themselves and talked with the school district and the IT department, they would be able to integrate the social media. So they can quickly translate what they had been doing to what the technology now has. That's a great idea, Rachel. Thanks, Tugi. But I guess we should wrap this podcast up. It's about that time. Today, I'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon members and our resources, wink wink, known as Exploring the Potential Benefits of Using Social Media and Education by Fozzie and Alfie, and Use of Social Media and Education, Positive and Negative Impact on Students by Raul Ipatil. Remember, if you want to become a Patreon member and for our bonus content, Join us at patreon.com slash talk. Thanks, Doogie, for putting us out there. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. And remember, this episode can be watched on YouTube. So we'll see you next time on Toucan Talk.